Hi, Madeline. Hi, Larissa. I was wondering if you had any experiences that you would be willing to share that involved boundary confusion or anything like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked. I had one recently that, um, that, that, that came up for me that I'd love to share about. So I was talking, it was in a three-way phone call with uh, my real estate agent and um, the real estate attorney who are both working for me. I'm selling a townhouse and uh, the real estate attorney is his associate. And we were responding to a letter from the buyer uh, about the inspection. And they were kind of asking, addressing a whole bunch of things. And um, there, were, there were some boundary pushing, uh, several boundary pushing instances. But one of them, I could see was they were both like, we were in this discussion about how to respond. And they both kind of said to me at one point, like, you know, you're the client, just make a decision and let us know what you want to do. And I said, okay, great. Here's my decision. And my real estate attorney responded with, well, because this and this, I think, you know, maybe you want to think about that. And this had been the discussion leading up to it before they said, just make a decision. There'd been all this kind of back and forth about things. And when he said that, I said, wait a minute, you just asked me to make a decision and now you're telling me to think about it. And he said, I'm sorry, what was your decision? And I felt, yeah, I felt really like, I think that was, this place of like these you know feelings came up in me of is it me or is it you is this confusing it just i'm confused and i'm pointing it out and then there's this feeling of i, I are we communicating like i'm am i being heard and uh you know i told him my decision again and it really kind of came down to became clear that he just wasn't happy with my decision and that felt like a boundary pushing thing where I'm being told one, just make a decision. And the implication is I, I'm indecisive somehow. And, and then, you know, when I make a decision, I get this pushback or it's not really being heard. And so I think for me, it was just staying in it and regulating myself enough to not get defensive about it, but just try to be matter of fact, and then see it the way I see it and kind of let go. That sounds interesting. Do, do you feel like they they had in their mind already what decision they thought you should make and they just hoped you would make the same one? Yeah. And I think, you know, he did sort of say, you know, it and really the clearly like his his and I said, are you know, are you you're afraid we're gonna lose the sale? Are you afraid that the buyer's gonna walk away? I said, Do you really think they're gonna walk away for this, you know? And he's got like, well, you know, I don't think so, but yes, that is my concern and this is my job and my job is to look out for your best interests. Of course, it kept coming back to what I want, but what I wanted in my decision was being, kept being pushed against. And he wanted me to kind of go further than I was comfortable going. And I just kind of had to keep saying that and then talk about it and reiterate it and, um, and, you know, finally, we kind of left it like, why don't you think about it? <laughs> you know, maybe we'll talk. We talked again the next day. And some at that point in the conversation, I made a comment where I said, I, honestly, I'm feeling bullied. You know, I'm telling you what my decision is and you don't like it. And, um, you know, I appreciate that, that, that you're on my side and you want this. But, I, you know, it, it was interesting how difficult it was to just disagree and to figure out well so who and not let it become a power struggle i kind of wonder if authority was anything mixed in there like are are they the expert and the authority since you know you're the client and then mm -hmm. it also reminds me of when they say flip a coin and when it's in the air you'll know which decision you kind of prefer and i'm thinking well so did did they have a preference originally and or did they not know until they heard what your decision was and then they kind of pushed back against it? It just, and then, and then the question is like, did, did they really want you to make the decision or only the decision they wanted you to make? Right. So that's, that's, I mean, how, how did you, how did you know how to stand your ground and kind of keep yourself composed and strong? 
You know, it's so interesting because as it was happening, I know there most of the times in my past, I would have internally pressured myself to change my mind, to just at some point, just the stress of it would have been so big that I would have just said, you know what, forget it, just do whatever you want to do. You know, like so many times in my past, I, I, I would have done that. Um, it really helped in the situation that I am the client right? Um, also that I had other buyers that weren't in the conversation and the negotiation, but not other buyers, other owners, other sellers that um, were backing me up that I knew, you know. Um, and But it, it really is, you're right, a, a matter of a little bit of status. Again, that these are the people, the authorities, these are both, you know, in terms of social status, they're like cis white hetero men who are experts who do this thing and just know this or are used to saying, you know, trust me, I know what I'm doing. And, and, but also just knowing one that I could live with the outcome, that even if the buyer did walk away, I'd be like, okay. And I didn't really think that. So that's in my, I didn't think that was going to happen one, but also being like, yeah, I really know where my boundaries and limits are on this and knowing that I thought my response was very reasonable. I wasn't just being, no, you know, I was like, I was giving lots of options and also just to be patient, like I, with him and be like, okay, you're not hearing exactly what you want to hear. And to acknowledge that and have him hear that and say, okay, where do we go from here? So it sounds like a big takeaway that I'm hearing is know yourself, know what you want before even jumping in the pool. It really helps to be in it, to, to have a little bit of ballast. Yeah. And that equanimity, because yeah, there were parts of me that this, and again, to be really firm with those voices that are like, you don't know what you're doing. They know better than you, that this is your, you know, you're gonna, and just to see those and be like, do I really think that? No, do I really think, you know, because they're, they, those are the ones that get me really dysregulated. And so to be mindful of that. Sounds like what you've said recently of notice and then notice what you're noticing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then just make a choice and keep choosing. It was really interesting when they were like, just make a decision. I'm like, okay, here's my decision. And they're like, well, and I'm like, okay. I hear that you're not, you know, and then I said I was willing to go halfway and that didn't, you know, make them happy either. And then I was like, I, okay, I think we need to step away from this now. We're not coming to an agreement, you know? Definitely sounds like a great learning experience, especially for anyone who gets to hear this from you. So I thank you so much for sharing. And I, I always learn from you and I hope everyone who gets to watch this also will find value and learning and may we all learn to better uphold our boundaries and get clarity on what we want in life. Yes. Thank you, Larissa. And for anyone listening, I think just encouraging, encouraging you to validate your own experience. Your experience is valid for you, even if other people aren't agreeing with it. And um, the ability to stick in there with somebody to validate their experience and your own and stay connected, it's, uh, it's worthwhile and it's challenging. So keep fun. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Larissa.